Okay, I've been informed that I'm live. So I'll replace this save file. I will start when I select the file. I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm Muncha Koopas. This is Hyper Light Drifter. Let's get started. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So first things first, I'm going to push every button on my Xbox controller to skip the opening cutscene. Cool, I didn't use my health pack. So I'll be playing on New Game Plus. I have two health and every ability in the game besides the weapons. Basic character movement is you can dash, you can also walk. Then you have a sword, and you start out with a pistol as well. Then you have you have limited ammo, and you refill it by hitting it or uh, attacking enemies. For this dash, I can actually chain them infinitely as long as I have stamina, which is uh, the bar in the top left corner. And I'll uh, usually do sets of two or three, and the reason for that is sets of two can serve your stamina better. Sets of three are faster, but use more stamina. And uh, after your third bonk, you will, or third dash, you will bonk if you hit a wall. And after your fourth, you'll do a slide when you stop uh, dashing. The main plot of this game is you're the drifter, obviously, and then you're out to kill. Well, really figure out why you're sick with some disease and kill some monster that's after you. That's the best way I can describe it. This game doesn't actually have any text or voice acting uh, to tell a story. It tells it all through like pictograph conversations. But you, you're sick with some disease. That's this cough thing right there. Staircases are weird because you can actually bonk on just about any point on them. This thing that I just activated is called a module. I need to activate four of them in each area. Uh, there's a north, south, east, and west. I went east first. The reason for this is uh, I just want to get to the end of this area to pick up the weapon that it gives me. And it's completely optional to pick up uh, any weapon in this game, no matter what difficulty you're playing on. Other than the pistol, you kind of need the pistol at least to do the bare minimum that the run requires. You can skip these little coughing fits, but it's hard to do. You have to dash, like, pixel perfectly, essentially, over the trigger that causes them to the end of the trigger. Basically in each area of the game, you learn that something horrible happened there. Like in this area, these otter people that lived here uh, were killed by these frog people. Also there's a ton of monsters and stuff. That's not good. I just did obviously as I went out of bounds. And you can do that with just about any door in this game. Uh, different doors just require different setups for going out of bounds. For those ones, the red ones, you just have to stay out of their like area for five or six seconds because they won't activate if you stand in them. And then as they're coming back up, you hold the direction against the wall and then dash away or dash into the wall. So there's something else you should know about Out of Bounds. Uh, what I did just then is I skipped using a key to open that door, which normally you would go to north first and get a really easy key. Oops, that's not good. The dash also has an auto-aim, which uh, can mess you up from time to time. As for Out of Bounds, there's actually a death timer for when you're out of bounds. And after about four seconds, your character will just be immediately killed. 
However, if you sit by pushing down on the D-pad, your character will actually, uh, that's not good. Anyway, if you sit, it resets your death timer. And I'm gonna go somewhat slowly in a couple parts, just to pick up extra health. Oh, this Out of Bounds here also skips a big arena fight. This one skips a locked door that unlocks after said arena. And in the opening cutscene of the game, you find out about uh, this dog creature. We assume it's like like a god, like Anubis or something. But he's trying to lead the drift. Uh, to his goals. And there were also other drifters before this one, like this pink one. And you actually find, I believe, other drifters in the world, and you pick up their outfits, and you can change your cape and your, uh, your cape, your robot, and your sword. And they actually all give you different bonus effects. So if you're actually waiting for some combat, for, you know, some shots to be fired, rest assured they will be soon. But something I didn't explain about combat is you can actually cancel all your uh, gun attacks into a sword attack or a dash, and you can cancel your uh, slashes into a dash as well. So if you push right trigger and then X to swing your sword on an Xbox controller anyway, that just obviously increases my damage output. Right here I'm going to do a little sequence break if this frog stops jumping. That's bad, actually. That's really bad. Didn't kill that one. Okay, I have to kill myself and start the room over. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is if you get hit by one of these projectiles at the apex of my dash, uh, it'll hold me in the air for a moment and give me a grounded state and I can dash again. Like that. Now we're gonna fight the first boss. It actually is possible to skip this boss, but it requires a really hard trick. So I'd rather just fight him to make sure I finish things. I'm actually just going to walk up right next to him. And this is a safe zone. And so all my abilities use my stamina, which again is the bar in the top left corner, including that charge slash you saw. It deals, I think, five or six damage. No, it's five. As does the shotgun, which I'm about to pick up. Getting the shotgun is important for a lot of reasons. One, obviously, because it does a lot more damage. And two, since I'll have two guns, I'll be able to do uh, weapon swapping. And the big benefit there is weapon swapping uh, actually instantly reloads whatever gun you had. So you can rapidly increase your damage output by using your shotgun, swinging your sword, swapping weapons twice to reload the shotgun, and repeating that. And then as you hit enemies with your sword, uh, it replenishes your ammo. Oh, and I have to teleport away now from this last module. After the last module in an area, it activates a cutscene. Uh, normally you can save and quit to skip this, but if you're fast enough, uh, you can teleport away. It does run the danger of either soft locking you or giving you a uh, sound glitch. And that's another out of bounds on that type of door. For those ones, it's a little harder to do when the doors face that way, but it's just like the red one. You, as soon as you open these, you just dash into the wall. For some whatever reason, it just unlocks some type of state where you can enter the wall. Ow. So you see again, you can bonk pretty much anywhere on the stairs. 
can skip this cough with well-timed dashes. As for the other abilities I have, uh, I am able to reflect projectiles with my sword, provided I have stamina. That'll come into play a little later. And then there's two different sword attacks that you can get, uh, depending on what order you press A and X in. If you do A then X, you do like a little step forward and a stab, which can uh, knock enemies into walls and other enemies. If you do X then A, it will dash through a series of enemies and deal two damage to each of them at the cost of uh, however much stamina. It's like an amount of stamina per enemy, and then it just takes all of that stamina away after you're done hitting enemies, or you run out of stamina. module in this area. Alright, this area is actually incredibly dangerous because a lot of enemies deal 2 damage with their attacks, and these mages especially uh, their attacks are ranged. They're bird people, of course. Ow! See, I don't even know how that one hit me. Now, let's see, where did it... okay. This game is also somewhat buggy, uh, in that it gives it's supposed to give you checkpoints at the start of nearly every room, um, but if you don't hang out at the beginning of the room for a moment, like, it just gave me one now because I moved through it slowly. If you move too quickly through the start, it doesn't give you the checkpoint for whatever reason. But obviously because I have only two health, uh, these enemies are very dangerous. No, I didn't need that. My bad. Okay, I'm gonna do another out of bounds here with these barriers that come up when I start this arena. reset the room. This actually uses the old any percent route from uh, for 1.1 had some stuff figured out. That's not good. Sorry about this. One sec. Okay. There. That's just like the doors. You just kind of walk into the wall as the uh, barriers come up and then they push you out of bounds. But I'm playing this on the uh, most current patch. here shortly. This one is a little trickier to fight than the frog. I'm gonna hit those so I can try and get some ammo back for my gun. squares will deal 2 damage and kill me instantly. Ah, I shouldn't have done that. I was actually fine where I was, but I expected him to summon a different pattern. It should give me a checkpoint right there. Ah, 
Ah, I didn't expect that one to come up immediately. Unfortunate. Um, he summoned two different types of... Uh, that's the unfortunate thing, is that, uh... <laughs> this boss can summon these things wherever he likes. Bosses actually are a lot easier than they look. I'm just having a bad night. No, it's it's a combination of the boss being random and me also dodging incorrectly. I will admit to my own mistakes here. do the areas in any order, aside from doing south first. Uh, the reason being that there's barriers that block you from going to the south, and you have to beat the other three areas first before you can unlock it. And the only reason I go east first in New Game Plus is for the shotgun. So you can actually skip the boss of this area, but it's probably the best boss. So I'll leave that up to chat to decide if I skip it or not. As far as like games that are similar to this, to me the uh, a good like similarities with Bastion, only in that you have this mechanic that moves you in a direction really fast and you can fall off uh, at pretty much any time. So the movement just comes to opt down to optimizing, you know, what's the most direct dash or roll path to wherever you're going, and in what ways can it help you cross gaps or go through walls or whatever. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. Unless you're playing this on mouse and keyboard, which you can. Okay. So what I did just then is you wait Sorry, hold on. You're supposed to be able to dash through this tree and skip this arena. I don't know why it's not skipping it. It's kind of annoying.
anyway, with this crystal, what you do is you destroy it and then wait for it to reform. And then if you dash while the crystal is coming back up, you can push you out of bounds. And I messed it up again. There we go. It's just really precise, I guess. do that out of bounds right there is because there's, that area I was in with the module is actually locked and you have to activate a switch in a different part of this or that big room. So I skipped doing that. Big the deal if that dog is in here. The wolves only deal one damage, but uh, they can knock you down. And when you're knocked down, you don't have invincibility, so you can be stunned from a bonk or an enemy attack and still take damage from other attacks. Those blue crystals right there will uh, kill me instantly. I'll skip this arena as well. If we just forgot to put borders there or something, I don't know. This is the only fourth module in this run that I actually do save and quit. Now it's just to uh, get to the pillar from this area and activate it. That's why you shouldn't slide, or do chained dashes in a lot of areas. Phew.
Oh, I didn't do it. Hold on. Oh, bye. have to pause there, otherwise it brings up the map. Alright, this area is all about, like, technology and robots. There's actually four bosses in this area, only one of which is needed to actually beat the game. You actually don't actually uh, technically need to beat any of the other bosses, you just need to activate the pillars. Um, it's just that this boss, there's no way to skip at the moment that we have found. So we just don't. But on the earliest patch of this, it's actually possible to skip uh, three of the four uh, area bosses. So you only have to fight the south boss and the last boss. getting hit by everything today. Wow! to say about this area at the moment, really. I'm getting bodied by boxes. The robots are really buggy in this game as well, those ones. Because for some reason, pistol shot plinking with your sword does not work as effectively on them, or like they cancel it out or something. It really doesn't make any sense. Like, you have to delay each one of your attacks so much before it actually comes out. is actually not good on health packs. That's not good. I didn't have a choice though, it was either die when the thing landed on me or do that. without getting hit. Let's see.
can kill him a lot faster if you play more risky. But stamina management is hard against bosses like that because, again, reflecting projectiles also uses your stamina. And if you have no stamina, you can't dash away to safety. Okay, two more modules to get in this area. Then we go back to town, and then we fight the final boss and end the game. this. The next couple rooms are some of the most dangerous in the game, and it's just nice to have backups. these enemies over here. That's not good. That's equally not as good. I was expecting to be able to dash past that blue one. <sighs> this is probably my least favorite room in the game, admittedly. It's just, it's easier to lure the enemies away and then try to open the door than it is to try to kill them all. Phew! Oh no, I missed a module. That's okay though, I actually know where I can get a backup. I forgot that I forgot to get one. Let's not die yet, please. Ah, uh, the out of bounds timer killed me right there. That really should... That should not be making me fall. I don't know why it is. Don't end like this. What the f- mm. This is my second least favorite room in the game.
And no soft lock. Good. Okay, now we just have to go down this elevator, fight the final boss, and then walk to the end. The final boss, let's see, I think most of his attacks deal 2 damage. But he's actually one of the easiest bosses. Because you just shotgun, swing sword, double weapon swap, repeat. You'll see what I mean. seconds or so, and I lose control of my character. You might notice as I walk back here that uh, it will not be the same. If I do any other movement here, like try to dash, it'll just make me cough like that. The ones that I did cough are, are scripted, so time is coming up. And... Time. I don't even know what my time was. a 3327 I think and that has like three or four minutes of time save in it anyway uh, that's it for me I guess we'll continue with the run I'll just leave this on until someone tells me to stop it thanks for having me Shaddix and thanks for throwing this marathon it's been a lot of fun watching I don't know what we have next because